Welcome back YouTubers. Today we're going to be clear coating the doors that we've been staining. So we're just going to get right into our demonstration. Before we actually get into some brush work and demonstrating how to clear coat, I'll just sort of take a quick look at the product here. You can see that it looks white like paint but once it gets onto the brush it looks like a milky substance. It's very runny, just like the stain. So we're going to have to go back on our work periodically and check it out for runs. I'll show you how we do that as we go through the demonstration. So I'm not sure if I have the whole door in or not, but what I'd like to do is start at the very top. So if we have any runs, we can deal with it on the way down. So we're going to start with the first crosser. You can just load up your brush, strike off if you want to on one side, and then lay down the product in the middle, and then work your way out. Work your way out to the top. And then just go to that join again like we did when we were staining. Just go to the join in the between the crosser and the vertical flat. Looks like we have a little air in the clear coat for some reason. We have a lot of bubbles. Now that's one reason why we don't shake our clear coat. It's because it becomes aerated and then it's hard to work with once we start applying it down on the surface. So once you get that squared away, we can start into our next section, the panel. We'll work our way down, this crosser, and so forth. So you just... It's not like stain where you have to Careful about working across the grain now, or where you start. Just brush it all out. Oh, so there we have a run. Press too hard on the brush. So now, just like we were staining, we have to deal with this right away. So wherever there's a drop, you just want to brush it out, feather it out there where it sits, but go with the grain, because we're going to be brushing with the grain. So you can actually just do that little section there. Like so. And then that can dry up a little bit, it won't do any harm. Now every few minutes or so, we need to go back on our work and check for runs because this product is extremely runny. It's, it's not like water, it's not quite like as thin as the stain. But it will get away on you. So just keep an eye on that crosser. And so the next time I when my brush is dry again, I'm gonna go back to that crosser above. Because I can see some sags. Okay, now the brush is pretty much unloaded. Now I'm going to go back here and start at one end, just go to the other gently and take out those sacks. Now I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but when you put the clear coat on, it changes the color so you can see where you've been. Like I made a little miss there, but I was able to see it. There's one in the corner there. Just go back periodically. Now you don't want to over brush this product either. So we just go back and give it a light touch if you see it sagging. And this is just the first coat. We're going to sand between coats. We're going to give it two, depending on the kind of finish you want. You may have to give it three. So we continue on. Load up your brush in the can and then you can the side of the can to 
get rid of the excess, or you can strike off, which is basically dipping in the can, and then you just strike off one side of your brush, and then your product is on the other side, and you apply that, and then begin to spread that. So if you ever hear that expression, and there's another drip, so you want to take care of that. You don't want these things building up because they will look really unsightly when the light catches it. So I have a tendency to load up my brush and then I tap the side of the can. The only thing is when you have a runny product like this, it tends to splash a little bit. So you might find it tidier to strike off on one side and then use the product on the other side of the brush and then work it through. There you have that panel. Maybe at this point we can go back and check, see if there's any runs or sags. It doesn't appear to be so. We'll see it's drying very quickly. So that's the good thing about these water-based products is they dry extremely well, but you have to move fairly quickly. Get the product on and spread up. We overlap a bit, we've got to get into that same direction as the grain. So now I'm striking off, teaching myself good habits. Anyway. Just work through. We want to stop there. If we do go over, we just Make sure that goes with the grain. If it dries up, it won't give us a problem. There, and now we're back into our next panel. Take care of this. What are we? I've had people mention, of course, that I'm very slow, but I hope you appreciate that I'm just trying to demonstrate you how to do things properly, give you a chance to see how you work the product, and then I don't remember anyone telling me we were in a race to do a project, but I suppose if you're a professional you want to do things quickly to make money, you're on a contract, but if you're a DIYer you just learn to do it properly and then get faster. Different strokes for different folks, as they say. A little bit of uh, paint, painter philosophy there. Hope you appreciate it. Again, we go back. You can look over here. I see a few sags. See a sag there. Sags through here. Sags all over. So you will kind of go back. You don't want to leave those brush marks that are going in the wrong direction. Check our panel. Each sag's there too. To say it's an extremely runny product. So I don't know if you can see this bottom panel in the camera. We'll just do the same as we did here. Product in the middle, work it up. back down to make sure it gets evenly spread. And then, when it comes to the verticals, I like to start at the bottom. And I know that I can spread my product maybe about a foot at a time. Start at the six inches from the bottom with my loaded brush, spread it out so it's not dripping, it's going to get all stuck to the drop sheets or mess up the floor. And then paint up about a foot, and that's my brush load. Then I do the same again, six inches away, start to spread it out and go into the wet edge.
side, we can look at our panel. Once we get up to halfway, we can go back and check our other vertical flat for runs. Oh, I forgot to go back and check. Hopefully we're okay. It didn't look too bad as we were applying it. So you've got to check it out in the light, even though you can see that we've um, covered the surface because of the color change actually there's a little mist there so we want to always check in the light to make sure that we catch any sags or runs because if they dry we can't afford to sand it out too aggressively and if the light catches it it just looks awful so do it now while you can And it'll look 500% better. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that lesson on clear coating and there's a few tips along the way to help you with painting too. And so we want to approach these things methodically and be in control, control the product. Then we'll end up with professional looking results. So if you have any questions about this or any other videos or you have any suggestions for a demonstration, I know I try to uh, get onto them as quickly as I can, but uh, I'll try to get around to them and also respond to your questions. And by all means, subscribe. So until the next time, it's been Craig from Skoka Painter, helping you take the pain out of painting. <laughs>